Now, I'm very excited on this edition of Isolation Interviews. My guest is the fantastically talented Sally Dinover. Thank you so much for joining me. Ah, oh, it's a pleasure, Matthew. Thank you for asking me. Now, obviously, life at the moment is very weird, very strange. No one really knows sort of what's happening next. I mean, how are you coping with life in lockdown? How, how are you keeping yourself entertained? Well, you know, it's very interesting because there are days when I think, gosh, I'm coping really well and I'm okay and everything's fine. And then there'll be a moment where I suddenly go, oh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm not okay. I am struggling a little bit and it's not okay. I, get, I kind of get myself worked up a little bit, but I have found trying to do a bit of exercise every day. At, like this morning, I've been for a run. And it's the little things, like I run past this little bread stall near Altrincham Market and on a Tuesday they, they're selling bread. And I always stop and, you know, it's social distancing, but buy a loaf of bread and then walk home with it. And I can't tell you, Matthew, how much that cheers me up. Just that little bit of social interaction, you know, just saying, yes, I'd like a, you know, a, a brown loaf and, um, and chatting to the lady over the thing, even though, you know, it's, it's just one of those little tiny things that I walk home going, oh, that's so good. I got to chat to somebody today. <laughs> you, yeah, you just sort of want that little bit of normality just to kind of sort of keep you sort of, you know, like you say, it can get very lonely if you're on your own or, you know, stuff like that. So you just want to have that, keep that yeah. human interaction going. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I am really fortunate because I've got my husband and my three children at home. So there's a lot of us here. So that's, you know, I am speaking to my mum a lot who's on her own. And um, I'm also, I've befriended this little, um, this lady through uh, Pains and Plough, which is um, a theatre company. And it's to read plays to people who are living on their own over the phone, which actually was quite interesting because I got kind of to know her. She lives in East London, she's called Bridget. And um, so now I'm just ringing her to see how she is. I'm, I'm not ringing to read the play anymore. I'm just phoning her up to see if she's okay. And it's really interesting. Because that's the uh, thing is obviously this whole situation has, although it's keeping everyone apart, you're not allowed to see people unless you live with them. But in a way, it's kind of bringing people closer together and people are talking more and doing like we're doing over Zoom and people are doing all those sort of things as well. Yes, I, I mean, you know, it is quite, I think there's some real good going to come out of this. I think people are going to think about each other more than they've ever done. I mean, now when I go for a walk, if I pass somebody, I'll always say, oh, morning or afternoon. And, you know, I, I probably would have done that before, but not as much as I am now. I'm just desperate for social interaction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking to everybody and anybody who'll talk to me. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because when, when I was younger, I had a, a small uh, portion of my life, I was living in France. And a lot oh. of the, the, the people in France, you know, regardless of if you know them or not, if you walk past them, bonjour, you know, you, you just, you just oh. always have that interaction. Whereas here, I don't think we've, well, I mean, more so now, but there was always yes. that time when you would just kind of ignore people as you walk past them. Um, so I think maybe we're, we're kind of heading more in that direction now. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, the, the brilliant thing as well has been um, all the key workers and the NHS are finally getting the recognition that they should have done years ago. And, you know, to, to stand on your doorstep every Thursday night at eight o'clock and clap for the NHS is, you know, it's a minute thing because they are so brilliant. And we've, you know, we've they've been overlooked for far too long, I think. Um, so I think to do, you know, everybody doing that, I hope after lockdown that people will start being much more sort of respectful to key workers and, um, you know, and the NHS nurses get a pay rise, which they so deserve. Exactly, so there's, exactly. There's so much good, I hope, going to come out of this. Now, one of the things you've been doing to kind of keep yourself occupied is you've been doing some dancing, I believe, with your daughters. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, how did that come about for you? Well, do you know, Matthew, it was really funny because I've never done anything like that before. It was the girl's idea. And it was Hattie, my youngest one, who said, put it on your Instagram account. And I was like, oh, no, that's <laughs> just too embarrassing. But anyway, I, one day we just thought, oh, do you know what? It might make somebody laugh. So we did. We did a couple. But I've not done any since. <laughs> uh, but I thought, no, two's enough. <laughs> I mean, it's a good way, though, to obviously, A, you know, keep you, you know, interested and, you know, so stop you from getting bored throughout the day. But also, you know, sort of dancing around and everything is actually quite good exercise as well. So it's a good way of kind of keeping fit in when you're sort of stuck indoors. 
Yeah, and mentally it's really good because, you know, Hattie will play some music that I've never heard before because I'm much older. And I'll think, oh, I like this. And I'm learning about music as we go along as well. So, yeah, it has <laughs> been quite an interesting time. Now, we must talk a little bit about Coronation Street because obviously you've been on the show now, I believe, is it 35 years you've been on the show or around about that yeah. sort of time? I yeah, mean, 34 years, yeah. I mean, how that time must have flown for you. How, I mean, what has your time on Cory been like? Wow. Well, do you know, it's very strange because those years have flown by. I mean, flown by. I, I still think I'm 21 and I, I never, you know, I look at the young ones and think I'm, I'm one of them. And then I, I look at the old ones and think, actually, no, I'm really one of you. <laughs> um, but I, I think it's flown by because what do they say, you know, when you're having fun? Um, time flies and, and it really has done on Curry because it's a family you know a lot of the people the makeup girls and the crew I've grown up with all my life and we've had children at the same time and you know it is a real family and it's a brilliant place to work everyone who comes to work on Curry like a guest always says this is the nicest you know set I've ever worked on it really is lovely and I think that's the beauty of Coronation Street is that it's a really warm place to be it's a really nice um, environment everyone's really lovely to each other and uh, I'm missing it so much it's really strange I was going to say the great thing with um, Corey is of course you had the real mixture of you have the people that have been in it for you know the, the sort of the longevity but you've also got a lot of new blood coming in so it must yeah. be quite nice to kind of get to work with new people all the time and but then also having those people that you kind of can get quite familiar with and the people that you get to do those scenes with day in day out for example you know yourself and Helen Worth obviously who plays uh, Gail. Yeah yeah I know I always I love it when we get um new uh actors in because they teach you something you suddenly have you know like Barty at the moment who's playing Jeff it's wonderful to work with him because you know he's done so much in his career so because I've just done you know I've been in Korea for such a long time I have this like insatiable appetite to want to find out what he's done you know what it was like who he's worked with how he felt I'm just really I love actors so I'm just fascinated by them and then the young ones I was saying to Hattie my 16 year old the other day that the brilliant thing about being in Corrie is that you know there's so many young people it does keep you young because you get interested in things they're interested in um, you know, and I've got my two daughters in the show and, um, and you know, all, all their growing up life, they've, they've taught me things. It's been, you know, it's been quite a, a, a wonderful time, really. Now, obviously, at the moment, uh, you know, the, the, the great thing that the show does is it gets people talking. And one of the storylines which you're involved in is, of course, the domestic um, abuse storyline, which is so powerful to watch. And you guys play it out so well. You must, when you're seeing, um, you know, Shelley, who of course plays Yasmin, um, you know, playing that, that's, that vulnerable side. I mean, mm. for us watching it as viewers, we're you know, just in awe. But for you guys acting it, what's that like to, to kind of watch a fellow actor performing like that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, what has been brilliant about this story is that it's been a slow burner. You know, it's come along, Jeff comes into the family and into the into our lives and he's this funny, happy, you know, um, guy who everybody loves. And then very slowly and gently we're sort of seeing, and now Sally's starting to uh, work out that actually all is not what it seems. And um, what is brilliant about that story is it's, it's, well, it's so real and it's so true. And... Um, it is hard watching Shelley play the vulnerable, but she does it so well. And and Barty, I mean, it's hard for him as well, Ian, because you know he's that's not him. So to play that is is really difficult for him. Uh, but the two of them have just. I think they've been amazing. And I said to both of them right at the very beginning, I think this is one of the best stories we've ever had on Coronation Street because it's just, you know, it's not it's it's something that's happening every day in real in everyone's lives and i think that's the beauty of coronation street is that you know when we pick these these topics that everyone can relate to you know not necessarily shootings and murders and all those things but things that are actually um about 
you know, people behind closed doors. I always think those stories are so interesting. So this is, is one of my favourite stories, and I think they've both been amazing. I mean, going forward, there'll have to be some sort of awards or something for the pair of them, because they have uh, absolutely, you know, done an amazing job. They really have, and I think they'll sweep the board with everything. I really do. <laughs> now, obviously, at the moment, Sally hasn't been able to see her daughters, because obviously they're both uh, away. Would you like to see them both come back to the show soon? Because uh, we, we know that, obviously, Brooke's currently off on mat uh, maternity leave. So would you like to see them both come back eventually? Oh, Matthew, I'm always wanting them to come back, because they're such good fun. And also, you can just get some fabulous stories out of the pair of them that... Yeah, I desperately want them to come back. You know, I mean, Sally's very happily married with Tim, but it's very different her not having her girls in the house. I think she would, I, I would, and I know the character would, love them to come back. And, you know, every week I kind of speak to them and say, when are you coming back? You know, <laughs> have you found up yet? Said you're coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I mean, obviously you've had some amazing storylines like we were just saying, you know, over the years. And I mean, a, a few weeks back, I was talking to Denise Welsh, who, of course, you know, was involved in the big, the big affair. So, I mean, yeah. it must be amazing to still, you know, 35 years later, still be involved in these amazing storylines. So, I mean, what were your memories looking back at, for example, a storyline like the, the, the affair? Well, that was a brilliant storyline for me, really, because I'd been off on maternity leave and I came back to that story, which was one of the best stories I've ever had. But previous to that, quite interestingly, I'd done like, well, it was probably 10, you know, 10, 15 years of Sally and Kevin being really happily married and never really having any, any sort of uh, big stories. We were like wallpaper. We were just there, Michael and I, you know, the happy family in the background. And suddenly I go off to have a baby and I come back and I'm presented with this story that Kevin's having an affair and um, obviously Natalie Barnes played by Denise Welsh and oh my gosh, it was fabulous. I came back to this explosive storyline which just couldn't wait to get back for. And, um, and obviously, you know, Denise has become a lifelong friend and, um, and she was brilliant. And it changed Sally and Kevin forever. You know, they never, after that, Sally had loads of affairs. He had affairs. They never really sort of got back to being, you know, that trusting young family that they were before Denise Welsh came along. <laughs> <laughs> and we had this slap, of course, that, um, you know, everyone talks about. And that was, that was Denise saying to me, oh, just go for it. On this next <laughs> test, just go for it. So I did. <laughs> And um, and then we were both like, oh, are you all right? Are you all right? I'm so worried about her. Because <laughs> that's but, the thing, um, obviously, when, you, when you're an actor and you're doing these fight scenes, you have to pretend like you really hate the person. And yet in real yeah. life, you're like best friends. <laughs> I know, yeah. And then we had this scene where we were like rolling around in the, in the streets on the, on the floor, um, you know, doing this fight scene, me pulling her hair and her pulling my hair. And yet we really love each other. <laughs> so it's really strange. <laughs> Now, I mean, obviously many people will, you know, still love the, the Kevin and Sally um, moments, but do you ever get people that kind of say to you, are they going to get back together? Are they going to get back together? Or do you think people now really do love um, Sally and Tim? Well, it's interesting because, uh, you know, uh, everyone always used to say, when is Sally and Kevin getting back together? But the last sort of five years, nobody's really said that anymore. And I really, I've always said this to the writers and that I really like the idea that Sally and Kevin will always be best mates. Like they've always look out for each other. And I love it when Kevin comes around and Tim and Kevin are, you know, getting on really well and Sally's just watching them because he's the father of her children. She doesn't want to lose him in her life. And I think, you know, he really cares about her and, and vice versa. But no, not anymore. Nobody ever <laughs> says that. <laughs> but it's a great way of sort of sort of a modern family, really, because you've got, you know, the, the two families and they come together and, and it's not always bickering and everything. You know, they, I mean, they have their sort of fallouts and everything, but most sort of families will kind of have the two sides. But, you know, they, they'll always kind of be a part of each other's lives. Yeah, that's so true. The modern family. I love that. Yeah. And, and that has been good because now um abby who plays sally carmen is now with kevin and um sally and abby were really good friends so you know it's that's quite nice quite nice dynamic really 
Now, obviously, you've been off, off from filming for, it must be about seven weeks now. You must be tearing your yeah. hair out wanting to get back. So, I mean, do, do you have any idea as to, to when life will return to normal or is it still quite up in the air? Well, it's a little bit up in the air. We've had emails sort of saying that by the end of June, we should be hopefully going back. But of course, you know, there's, I don't know how many members of Coronation Street, there are 75. And now we can only have two people in a scene. It might mean that we're not all back at the same time. Stories might be staggered. They're going to have to tell stories differently. Um, obviously, you won't get hair and makeup anymore. So you're going to see us all like raw. <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> that's obviously the, the worry is that a lot of people with all the soaps they worry that yeah. you're going to run out of episodes to show soon so they want you they want you to get yeah. back obviously keep safe and they want they don't want anything to happen but they, they they don't want the soaps to run out where we just end up with dead air for a while yes no i i think it's important them that we get back actually i really do i think you know the public want their their soaps back on so i think we need to get back i mean it might and i actually think it might be quite interesting the stories we tell when we can do two hand scenes that might be really really interesting to see what happens in the future and what ha what comes from this i mean this is a really important year as well for coronation street because it's our 60th anniversary this year so you know we were building up to this big story in December and the writers and the producers gosh I mean I think our producers are working their socks off at the moment trying to get it all together and can't wait to get back really because that's the other thing is will, will you as soaps mention the coronavirus or because I know some people kind of don't want you to mention it because it's a good escapism but at the same time it is happening it's real life um, so you know maybe it would be good to kind of feature the whole you know r real life drama really that's going on yeah, I mean, at first, I, I thought they wouldn't deal with it. But I think now that they've decided that they do have to deal with this. And I, I think that it's because it, it's got to mirror real life, really, because it's, a, you know, people will, if, if you see everybody in the Rovers, everyone's going to think, oh, well, I can just go to the pub then. So, you know, we've got to kind of do what, what, what's going on on the outside so it is i think it is a good thing that we're going to be doing that probably wearing masks on the street i i, I don't know till we go back but it'll be you know it might be a very different curry but a really good one too now i mean obviously speaking to you i get the impression that curry is somewhere you you'd never want to leave you want to i mean do you hope to stay there for as long as they'll have you or do you think there is a time when you might want to try something new well, Matthew, it's such a difficult profession. And I, you know, I know I've watched people come and go from Curry over the years. And, you know, it's very, very difficult. And I think that I'm really happy where I am. I get great stories. And, you know, I get to come home at the end of the day and, and be a mum. So it fits in with everything that I'm, just, I'm really happy there. So, I, you know, I always said I'd stay until I wasn't happy and I wasn't getting the stories. But I am. And I'm still enjoying it and I still get excited by by scripts so who knows who knows and we, what and we love seeing you on the show Sally is an absolutely fantastic oh. character I mean what what's the kind of interaction you get with you know people over social media or things like that what what do people kind of say about Sally uh, to you I don't know I mean this is, might be in my head but I kind of feel that she's probably Marmite you know some people really don't like her <laughs> snobby and and some people like like that and find her funny or you know they've grown up with her so um i think it's um uh, 50 50 you know so no. who knows <laughs> <laughs> now i just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you it's you know i mean to, to get someone for you know like yourself to, to to talk is always fantastic so thank you for for giving up your time uh, very quickly oh. though is there anything you'd like to say to anyone who's listening in hospital or anyone who's watching online any messages you'd like to give them oh yes i would i just want to say you know if you're in hospital get well soon and everyone is with you and all the hospital staff where everyone's thinking about you and you know you're you're amazing and yeah sending everyone lots of love thank you so much sally it's been an absolute pleasure keep safe and uh, yeah thanks again thank you matthew it's been a pleasure i've really enjoyed it thank you